Hey Climbers, it's Ryan Mullen here and welcome back to my channel. But today, this is not going to be a happy video. This is in direct contrast to my Love and Valentine's Day video last week because this week we have a lot to talk about because this week is the annual day of disability and disappointment. It is Hans Asperger Day and yes, I don't know why, but there is an Asperger Day. And we're going to be talking about why that's an issue around the world for so many disabled people. And I'm going to skip the formalities and the informalities because I've got a lot to cover today. So I'm just going to go straight into it. Okay, so we've obviously all heard of Hans Asperger, okay? He was the pioneer of autism and Asperger's syndrome, which by the way is no longer an official diagnosis and I'm going to get onto that topic later. But, you know, we all know who he is, right? The great pioneer of autism of the modern age and blah, blah, blah. Now, if you want to honour Hans Asperger, that is fine. You're more than welcome to do that. I'm choosing not to honour his work and I'm going to back this up with facts. Facts don't care for feelings. And we're going to get on to the facts of who Hans Asperger really was and why we should not be celebrating his work. So we're going to date this back to the 1940s in World War II. And Hans Asperger, believe it or not, Hans Asperger was a Nazi. And he was fighting for the Nazi party and their far-right Nazi regime. Which, by the way, at least two of my great-grandfathers fought against as did millions of other British troops of that time. And in this regime, disabled people, along with millions of other minorities, were slaughtered by the thousands by Nazis like Hans Asperger under the grounds that they were considered unworthy of life. And this was the case for pretty much any group of people that the Nazis didn't agree with. Until Hans Asperger came along and he separated the high-functioning autistic people of that time from the low-functioning autistic people of that time. And I have to use those quotes loosely because that is where functioning labels actually come from. Just for the record, I do use these in my own diagnosis because my official diagnosis back in 2002 is actually high functioning autism. Now that isn't a diagnosis that is diagnosed as now due to the introduction of, of the DSM-5 in the 2010s. So we don't actually use that terminology now, but I use it to describe people of that era for historical context and I use it to describe my own diagnosis because that was the accurate wording of it in 2002. So essentially what Hans Asperger did is he observed the high functioning autistics. By the way, who weren't even treated as people or even patients, they were just treated as, in their words, experiments. And what he basically realised through his observations were that these people could actually work for the Nazi party. He even believed that these autistics could be cured. So he changed the Nazi party's priorities by letting the high-functioning autistics live and work for the Nazis and mass-murdering the rest by sending them to child euthanasia programs. Not only did Asperger and the Nazis capitalise off of high-functioning autistics out of greed, but ableism is rooted in the fact that if a disabled person wasn't murdered, they were enslaved, essentially, by the Nazi party. Now, I'm not saying that Asperger personally murdered anyone, but he is the reason for thousands of deaths of disabled people in that time period. He was the figure that led to restricted measures being taken against the people that he deemed unworthy to live or to be incurable. This is all just his own terminology, by the way. He even ironically used the term autism psychopaths to describe the lower functioning autistics. And if this wasn't bad enough, he was allowed to work as a doctor for another 30 years after World War II. This means that any of his patients, or to use his words, experiments, 
could have been subject to these kinds of values up until 1975 which to put it into perspective is only 47 years ago you know it's not exactly long ago in the grand scheme of things at this point my mum would have been seven and my dad would have been five to make matters worse he was actively promoting sexism whilst doing this by only focusing on males this has made it so much harder even now for women to get diagnosed with autism because the DSM-5 is written from the male perspective and if you're trans or non-binary or black or whatever the case may be this leads to even more problems because these kinds of backgrounds aren't listed in the DSM-5 because of the work of Asperger now this last point about transgender and non-binary people aren't really Asperger's fault because those kinds of communities weren't around then and even if they were around then then those communities would still be killed by the hundreds and thousands in a different way but what he could have done is examine a variety of different patients from all different kinds of backgrounds this would help understand differences in the way that autism is diagnosed and found in women, in black people, in LGBT people, etc, etc. This could have massively changed how the DSM-5 was even written and would therefore make autism so much easier to diagnose today. The issue is today is that Asperger is seen as a figure that promoted equality, but his sexism, his racism, his homophobia has only led to more ableism and discrimination across the board even 80 years later. He obviously didn't want equality because if he did, he would have experimented with all different kinds of people from around the world. He definitely had a xenophobic mindset, this much is obvious. And his work didn't help society then and it doesn't help society now. But even so, Asperger is seen as a great figure in the autistic community, even today. But his findings weren't actually based on science and they weren't based on psychology. What they were based on were his and the Nazi party's visions. And these views were based on his party of tyrants, no less, and discrimination fueled by capitalism. Now, do you think we should celebrate his work? Just pause the video now and think to myself, if I have celebrated his work before, should I carry on celebrating it now? Unfortunately, not many people believe today that our great-grandparents' era fought for our freedom. But in many, many ways, such as this one, they really did. Had the Nazi party had invaded England, the English lower functioning disabled community would have been killed by the millions simply for being severely disabled, along with many other minorities. And no education would be taught on this issue, alongside other big problems such as the war lasting longer than necessary, just so that the Nazis can invade more land and possibly eventually the world. This would mean millions of people would have no chance in life even today, if we'd have still been under that party's regime. So, I think we should be thanking Winston Churchill and the armed forces of the World War II era for their services 80 years ago. Because it really was them people that gave us the freedom to live as individual people that we today take for granted. Now, I'm not saying that Churchill was perfect by any means and I'm not gonna disguise that. He had his faults, but he guaranteed the safety of millions of not only disabled people, but Jewish people, LGBT people, and many, many other communities, simply by not surrendering to the Nazi party. So in that respect, he is a hero, a flawed hero, don't get me wrong, but he's still a hero. The irony now, though, is that the exact same people that would criticise Churchill for being xenophobic are probably going to be the kinds of people that the Nazis would have murdered by the thousand if they'd have got their way in 1945. I hope this little video shed some light 
as to why we shouldn't be celebrating somebody like that. And I would urge you this. On 18th of February for Asperger Day, if any disability-based charity, big or small, asks you for donations for Asperger's Day, don't do it. Whatever the intentions may be, no charity should be profiting off of greed, discrimination and hatred. So what we need to do now is we need to eradicate days, awareness days, weeks, months like this for the benefit of all autistics. This day isn't helping anyone that could have been diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome in the last 20 years. All it's really doing is raising awareness of the ignorance of the facts of today's generation. When there is such an amount of evidence of hatred amongst the entire generation of the Nazi party, the hateful history behind Hans Asperger is available to research for the world to see, you just need to research it. All we should be using this awareness day for is to raise awareness as to why we shouldn't celebrate it in the way people intend. We shouldn't be promoting it in schools or disability charities or youth clubs or anything like that. All we should be promoting is the historical origins behind Asperger and Asperger syndrome. Purely so that he is painted in the negative light that he deserves. Just because that people with Asperger syndrome can go on to do great things, doesn't mean that we should be giving their so-called pioneer a positive legacy. This isn't Monopoly, so why the hell are we giving him a get out of jail free card? It doesn't make sense. He doesn't even deserve one after all the lives that he and his colleagues have took in child euthanasia programs purely for financial gain. Anyone who is against extremism, violence, discrimination and hate ideally should be against this. Now, there are, unfortunately, a lot of uncertainties around Asperger's work, but what we do know, in my opinion, is more than enough to consider him an evil human being. And anyone who speaks of him should be aware of the facts. Not that anybody will be, because they don't teach it in schools and I have no idea why. We get taught about slavery, the Holocaust, the suffragettes, and all these tragedies that should never have happened. And this is no exception, but it's still not getting spoken about nearly enough as it should be, not even half as much. If we know so much about the Nazis' hate for Jewish people, why aren't we also speaking about their hate for disabled people? Just because they killed more Jews than disabled people doesn't mean that we shouldn't be talking about this either. Disability history is part of human history and all aspects of human history should be taught in schools equally so that everybody is aware of people's struggles. Now, a lot of people are actually quite unaware of these facts, but it's up to us to provide the education for future generations and the millions of ignorant people today who praise him for having exceptional knowledge in a world without technology and all of that rubbish that comes with it. The only real knowledge that he had was how to keep tyrants rich and that's not the kind of person that I would like to honour. And regardless of if young people today realise this or not, the term Aspie is only a reminder of the xenophobia that Hans Asperger was promoting and making a career out of. And it is promoting a history of hate. Autistic people all they really want is a society that accommodates them and also to make the world a better place to live in. But we can't do that if autistic people ourselves are glorifying hatred. The irony here is we can't fight ableism if we ourselves used ableist terms as forms of endearment. The fact that Asperger's work is so prominent and so influential in the world today, for me, that is deeply worrying. How can we, as a community, make any progress if we are constantly promoting such a hateful name? And if you don't believe me on any of this stuff, you can Google it yourself, you can do your own research, maybe watch a documentary on it if there is one, and let me know what you find. 
And after you do that, I personally believe that you would say the same thing as this video's title. Say no to Asperger Day. Well, that's it for this video, guys. Sorry it's been bloody depressing, but I've got to get this stuff out so that people are actually aware of what people are doing now, what people did then, and what we can do in the future. I'm sorry if any of these stories upset you, but these stories are facts, these stories are truth, and we have to tell the stories. Otherwise, we will never make progress as a community. And I think anybody watching this video can all agree that that is the most important step for an accommodating society. And I'm not going to say if you liked this video, because it was very ranty, but if you support what I'm saying, and if you found it informative, then please give it a like, a comment, and share it with your loved ones. As usual, while you're there, please subscribe to my channel and ring my notification bell down there so that you don't miss a single video. Please follow me on my social media and my website if you wanted to see more of me outside of YouTube. The links to all of this, along with my music, are in the description box below. If you're a creative climber like me, then please send me your work. I would love to see what you can do. And if this is your first time on my channel, then welcome. I'm really, really glad you're here and I hope you come back very soon. And finally, thank you guys for watching. I hope you sort of enjoyed it-ish and I'll see you very soon for a brand new video. Keep climbing high, guys. Ciao for now. I've been Ryan Mullen from Creative Climbers. Peace and love.